Hello and welcome to another tale from my book, The Tales of Old Ireland Retold. It's by me, Laura O'Brien. And if you are new to us for some reason, then I have been reading these tales out for my Patreon as we go month on month. It's one of our Patreon rewards. So if you're interested in getting them before anybody else does, please head over to patreon.com forward slash Laura O'Brien. This one is about Bov Jarek and they're quite short and to the point, but packed with genuine Irish lore, mythology, and of course the touch of a native Irish storyteller. So we are here with the Harper. Clochend stood by the gateway as the first strains of harp music filtered through to them. So he has come. As you knew he would, daughter, said the Bove. We foresaw this many cycles back, and now he is here. They listened as the music grew, seeming louder than one person could accomplish on one harp, filling the chamber in which they stood with the not unpleasant, granted, sounds of his playing. Is it two harps he's playing on, though? So it sounds, she replied, skillful, at least. I'll not go to him, though, as I said. No matter to me, the Bove shrugged. He can get no closer. The guardians will see to that, and they will stay as long as is needed. Outside the she of famine, Cleoch played his two harps. He had first tried to enter, planning to claim the wolf-head warrior woman Clochend as his own. But the Bove who ruled here must have already divined the design he had placed on the daughter of the monster she. Even while Cleoch sat above in his own she Banya in Connacht, hatching his plans of wooing and solicitation. For he'd heard tell often of the woman's might, and it brought a great grief to him, urging him to take it, to keep it for his own. At home there were wolves aplenty that required management and control, and if Cleoch could take that power he would soon rise through the ranks of his own she. His king, Shmirdov Makshmal, of the three Rosses atop the mountain, valued greatly the family of the Bove, and would be fierce content to have one of the daughters in his own Tua. But when Cleoch arrived here to the she on this mountain, he was met with a boundary and guardians to greet him. Sent out by the Bove, these guarding creatures were formed of fire and flame, cased in stone and hide, scalding the land with each step, alive but not living. They formed that boundary over which he could not cross, so he had sat outside the circle and began to play. His harps contained the magic of his she, and they were a balanced pair. As long as he played them together, he needed no food or drink, no sleep or rest, and no weather could touch him. If he could not enter to claim his prize, he would entice her out beyond the boundaries and take her then. And so he played the charms of his noble chant over and over, through morning and night. Many traveled to hear his harp, sweet sounding as it resonated through the mountain. Throngs of chiefs admired the music that he made. A host of the she gathered, curious as to the outcome, this challenge to the magic of the bove. And they stayed on sight with plenty of delights until the two of the she of Femin were plagued with indolent fairies, bent on endless durance to the final outcome, whatever that might be. So passed a full cycle of seasons, a year as we call it. Still Cleoch played. I wish to end this, enough is enough, and he will not stop of his own accord with such an audience, for his pride is at stake now. No matter to me, the Bove shrugged. Your wish and your will, daughter, is what matters here. 
I will go to ground and take the shape of the earth. I will go to him then and he shall have a woman's might indeed. At the boundary, the guardians ceased their scalding steps. The first rumbles were felt by the gathered host and it rippled unease among them. So they began to move away. The harper started to tremble in dawning horror at what could shake the very earth such as this. Unmoving, the guardians watched the first cracks appear in the ground by their feet, splitting with hisses of steam escaping, as fire rose from the heart of the world to spill downhill across the grass. Still, Cleoc played sweet melody on his two harps, till the earth beneath him burst and Crochend broke forth in full fire form. Seizing him even as he died of terror, she took the harper and his harps down to where she dwelled, followed by the guardians, their work complete, while water began to flow into the hole she had made in the earth. This formed what men later call Loch Beldrachen, the lake of the dragon's mouth atop the mountain. Then all was silent at the she of Femin. And that is based on one of our many, many, many Denhyanicus tales, the lore of place names, which explains why the lake of the dragon's mouth is a name of a lake in the Comra mountains where the she of Femin now dwells. Slong a fool. I'll see you in the next video.